Okay, the spectre's bad in this, but I'm going to try and point out a few different uses and methods that change the way and the distance that you'll read a card at. This is a My Fair Classic card. Uh, four digit ID. So, bringing it slowly down, I can actually get this one to read UID only at about 8 centimeters. So that would be just there. But notice that I'm not able to hold the card static. I have to actually be moving it through the field before it will read properly. And as I'm moving, it's reading. But if I hold it static, it will read once at most and that will just sit. It won't actually continue to read until I move it further in the field. Further in and closer and closer and it's it's reading but only each time I move it. Anyway, that's the My Fair Classic. This is my Alpha Ring. I've worn a little bit so it's starting to get beat up again but this one if I'm bringing it close to the board it will slowly slowly still not reading still not reading and this is an alpha still not reading and touching the board without reading But, if I jiggle it slightly through the field, I'm getting a read. And it's actually reading a complete record. If my read motion is more like this, sweeping back along the board, then I'm getting a good read. And it's a reasonably good distance read. I could put a large big piece of perspex in between this ring and this board and it would actually read. Now the same thing, if I change the orientation of the ring and go sideways this way, it will actually get a good read. And at about the same distance. If I turn it diagonally and run across the board like this, I'm not getting a read at this distance. Still not get, there we go. Just getting a read just there. But again, the distance is absolutely minimal. Now, if I'm using this ring, which is quite a small size, so there's high curvature of the inlay. If the camera will pick up. So it's high curvature of that inlay. It's not flat at all. I don't know if you can see. There we go. So this this is a bad ring to read. It's uh, size six, I think. But anyway, it's not going to read easily. So if I put it straight into the top of the board where the antenna is. Still not reading, still not reading, still not reading, still not reading. And I can't make it read, I can make it read directly below the IC. Just pushing straight in. I can make it read here, just pushing straight in. If I turn it, I can make it read here, pushing straight in, but it's touching and I can make it read here, pushing straight in, but it's touching. Whereas, if I use that same sweeping motion, then I get a distance read, because it's moving through the RF field, and it's triggering that way. Touching's great, but it's limited. Whereas if you change your motion, slow sweep 
through the RF field generated by the PN532 board, then you get a lot more success. These aren't meant to just be tapped up against a device. You're getting interaction between two coils. One's the antenna side, which is the active side, which is where all your RF is coming from, and the passive side is in the inlay. And if it's just sitting there doing nothing, it doesn't tend to work quite as well. So if you move it through the fields, you get a good read. And again, I could put a really meaty piece of perspex in between the NFC module and the ring for protection in a reader, and it would still work because there's enough distance there. You would, though, have to sweep the ring across the reader. So that's that one. Here's another one. Uh, clear inlay. This is my production ring. So again, same size, high curvature, so it's a lot more difficult to read. It's difficult to read on a phone because of the high curvature, but if you know where the sweet spot is and you use a sweeping motion, you can do it. Just tapping the bag doesn't make anything happy. And coming down, just getting a read. Okay, but if I sweep, I'm getting several reads. So sweeping, sweeping, and it's working quite happily. Again, if we go for the side, sweeping across that way, we've changed the orientation of the ring, we're getting a good read. It's reading the complete record, not just the UID. And your phone or other device is exactly the same. You have to sweep the, f the device through the sweet spot. Otherwise, it just simply does not work. Going diagonal, No, we're getting a partial read that way, but it's not quite right. Best is if you're oriented with the line of the antenna. So that way, or this way. That way we're perfect. Okay, so that was a big alpha, reading exactly the same height as small classic rings on the PN532 Alec House V3. Um, I can do a similar thing with this card where if I'm bringing it down the wrong way it won't read until it's within around about 40 mil which is crap for that card especially when I had it reading at about 80 mil before. But if you're not aligning it with the pattern of radiation, it just doesn't work well. And I'm letting it sit there. If I seesaw it a little bit, like this, at that same distance, I do get a read. But not as far as here. And it can be as simple as that, or it could be as simple as not twisting your wires, because you're affecting the signals that are going to the external board here, and you're injecting interference into the thing. Same height as everything else was, not getting a good read. <laughs> And that's purely by twisting the wires. Yeah, no read at all. Uh, if I touch straight on top of the IC, I'm getting a read now. But again, just you have to be careful the way you set your gear up. Notice also that this one is at 90 degrees across the line of the loop antenna. 
You have to do that to minimize the interference that you're putting through there. Because of the design of the board, because everything's in the center, you have to cross over the antenna at 90 degrees. Otherwise you're just interfering with everything that you're trying to do. There we go, good read. Reasonable distance. Once more with this one. Yep, good read there. Anyway, that's it in a nutshell. You have to be very careful of how you set your gear up. And method is a huge part of it. 